Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to day five of CSS3 in 30 days. Today we're gonna to be building something super simple and super easy, but it's really, really meaningful and can really kind of take your websites or your applications to the next level when it comes to user experience. Now let me show you what I mean. Jump over here into my browser. We're gonna do something called useful broken images. Now, whether it's a typo in the image tag source or the image tag itself was misplaced or removed on the server, images break all the time on the web. The problem is the browser's default way to display a broken image is typically pretty darn ugly. You know where you have that little like screenshot that shows like a little image thumbnail with like a crack through the middle or a rip and it just, it's a broken image icon and it doesn't look very good. Sometimes it's just, it, the browser's default way of displaying that kind of looks bad. You can fix that, however, and actually use it as an opportunity to enhance the user's experience on your web pages with CSS. Now that's your challenge this lesson. So you kind of take, you know, when the websites throw you lemons, you create lemonade, right? So we're going to be creating useful broken images. Let me show you. This is a standard broken image. It cannot find this image. On purpose, I coded it improperly, so it's finding an image that is not located on the server anywhere. This is what it looks like. It looks terrible and makes you look bad. But if you scroll down here, check this out. Flying eagle not found with a nice little icon, a camera with an X and then a nice dotted line around it. It's just, it looks nicer. Now the image isn't there, so that sucks, but it's pulling in information and notifying the user of what happened. This is a much more fluid and positive user experience. Let's find out how to code that right now, shall we? Over here in our code editor, I have my number five useful broken images course files. Go ahead and download that. It's in this module. You could click to download it. It'll give you a Dropbox link, something really simple. So you could download the useful broken images and index is the markup. It's very simple. All it is is uh, an image tag with no, with uh, no image there. So, there's no image on the server called broken image. I did that on purpose. And then an alt attribute. That's important because we're going to be using that in CSS. That's all it is. Sandbox is where we're going to be coding up our, our uh, styles and final is the final result. So let's go ahead and do that. Code our styles right here. First thing we're going to be doing is selecting a class just called image. Now I could have just selected the image tag, but I just wanted to do it this way. And we're going to say position relative. The display will be inline block. The font size, let's do something like 0.7 rem. Text align center, text transform, uppercase and save. Now, if we head over to our browser, you're gonna see here uh, it, that it's changed the, the default style of the broken image. Now I wanna make that font size a little bit bigger. So I'm actually just gonna say one rem and that should make it the default size. I like that, okay. And now what we're gonna do, this is easy. We're almost done. Image, the after pseudo element. We're gonna say display, inherit. So we're gonna inherit the inline block style. We're gonna position, absolute, top zero, left zero. We're gonna do width 100%. Min width, it's gonna be a minimum of 200 pixels. Padding will be 10, 20, 10, and 45 to account for the icon that we're gonna put in the left side. We're gonna go border, oh, we need a semicolon up here, that's why. Border dashed, dashed one pixel, triple eight. And then we're gonna say background color is gonna be F0, F0, F0. And then the background image, we're gonna pull that URL called noimage.png right here in our useful broken images folder directory. Background size for that image is gonna be 10%. Background repeat, no repeat. Background position, we're gonna put it at 15 pixels on the X, 10 pixels on the Y, Z index one, and the content, this is gonna be cool. So I'm gonna save that actually. Save so far and see what we have. Now you can see there's nothing there. We did all these styles but nothing showed up. That's because we didn't do the content property yet. So you always have to do content on an after or before pseudo element. Back here in the code editor, simple. We could do something like content to empty string. Now, if we head back, you'll see that something is appearing, but it's, it's obviously doesn't look very good. So we're gonna fix that by adding text within that element uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna uh, adjust that. So, so here in content, we're gonna do the double string and then right after that, we're gonna say 
attribute. So it's the attribute value for the content property. And we're going to say alt. So what's that doing? It's looking for the HTML attribute alt, the value of it. So here, the alt flying eagle. So it's looking for that attribute alt. So it's going to grab that value and put it as the content. And then after that, another string to close, one double string to close that previous one. And then not found and then close the string one more time. So how does this work? So we have an open uh, double string, which closes over here. But we also have another set of strings in here that wrap around the attribute alt. So it's just something that we kind of have to do. Uh, it's like concatenating the text. So attribute alt, so the alt text not found. Save that, go over here to our browser, check it out. Flying Eagle not found. We got that icon from our useful broken images directory. Nice. And now if we had a different image, let's go to our index and I'm just going to add another image here and say broken image two and change the alt text to like, let's just say paddleboard. And then I'm going to put uh, a break tag. Save that, check it out in the browser. So paddleboard not found. Now they're stacking on top of each other. The reason why that's happening is because these are the after pseudo elements, the actual image itself. So if I inspect this, the image itself is, is this large. And then the after pseudo element is, is that size. So the image, they're actually stacking on top of each other perfectly, but it's the after pseudo element that's conflicting. So we just give the image some space around it. So here, I'm just going to say margin images will have like a margin of zero, zero, 040 pixels. And then that should solve the problem. There we go. So over here, we got some space. Nice. Looks great. So that is day five useful broken images. That's all we had to do is really simple, but very powerful because, hey, it's nice to have a nicer user experience and we can do that with our broken images. You didn't, maybe you didn't know that you could do that. And it's a pretty cool trick that's useful in your web development and your, your portfolio, your website, apps, applications, client sites. So hopefully you enjoyed the useful broken images lesson. Hang tight for tomorrow. We're going to do day six and we got some more fun stuff to code up in CSS. I'll catch you there. Bye now.